Question 1 from the 2023 National 5 Physics Paper from the SQA. The letters X, Y and Z represent missing words from the following passage. And here's the passage. Quantities that have both a magnitude and a direction are called, and X is a missing word, and we're asked to give two examples of this type of quantity are Y and Z. So quantities that have a magnitude and direction are called vectors. So we have got either this one, this one, or this one to do because x, the missing word is vectors. Now, we're looking for two uh, quantities in column y and column z that are both vectors. So we look at response c, energy is not a vector and neither is mass. Both of them are scalars. Force, on the other hand, is a vector and so is acceleration a vector. So it could be d. Energy, once again, not a vector, it's a scalar, and force is in fact a vector. So the one containing two examples of the vector is the force and acceleration, and your response is going to be 1D. Question 2. A trolley is released from the top of a slope and passes between two light gates, P and Q. The distance between the light gates is D. Now the time taken for the car to pass through light gate P is T1 and the time taken for the car to pass through light gate Q is T2. And of course the length of the card on the trolley is L. Now we're asked to find the instantaneous speed of the trolley at light gate Q and what it's given by. Well to find the instantaneous speed you must in fact time that takes the length of the card to go through the gate. So this particular gate here, P, we know that the length of the card is going to be L and the time taken is going to be T1. So the instantaneous velocity at point P is going to be just simply equal to the length of the card divided by T1. When we get down to Q, the instantaneous velocity at Q is the same idea. It's the length of the card divided by the time it took that card to pass through that light gate and we're told it's going to be T2. So the question says, find the instantaneous speed of the trolley at light gate Q. Well, the instantaneous speed of the trolley must be L divided by T2. So we go down to our responses, L divided by T2, and our correct response for question number two is D. Question three. The graph shows how the speed of a runner changes during the last eight seconds of a race. And we've got the speed time graph. And we're asked to find the distance travelled by the runner over the course of 8 seconds. Well, the first thing you realise, you're dealing with a speed time graph. And it's the area under the graph that gives you the distance gone. So all you have to do is label the graph or check it off into squares, rectangles or triangles. Now for the first two seconds here, you can see we've got a nice perfect kind of rectangle. So we can work out that area. This part here is more problematic. So what we have to do is in fact section it off like that to give us a longer rectangle and a small kind of like long longish triangle. We can easily find the area of that. So let's go ahead and work out the areas then. And we work out the first one first. It's going to be two along, four up. So the area is going to be just put down eight units. The long rectangle, be careful. You're going from four up to eight, which is really six along. And you're going four up. And it's therefore going to be 24 units. What about the area of this triangle in here? We'll be careful once again. Along the way, the base of it is going to be six. And the height of it is going to go from 4 to 6 is going to be 2. So the area of that is going to be uh, 1 half times the base times the height. So just treat it like a, a, a rectangle. 6 twos are 12 and half it and you get an area there of 6. So we have the following areas. We'll get 8, 24 and 6. So the total area of that graph is going to be 24 plus 6 plus 8. And if we add that all up, we're going to get a value of 30 units. But that converts into, an, into a distance because the area under the graph is the distance gone. So the distance gone in this question is going to be response C, 38 metres. Question 4. A block is pushed 3 metres up a slope by a constant force of 6 newtons. There's a diagram there, it's not drawn to scale. The force of friction between the block and the slope is 2 newtons, and the mass of the block is 1.5 kilograms, and the work done by the pushing force in moving the block 3 metres up the slope is, and you're giving your five responses. So we have to find the work done by the pushing force. So what's the size of the pushing force? 
it's six newtons. So the work done W is equal to the force multiplied by the distance the force acts through. So the work done in this case is going to equal to the force, the pushing force, which is six newtons, multiplied by the distance, which is going to be three meters, and therefore the work done by the pushing force is going to be 18 joules. So the answer to this question is got to be D. But you have to be very careful here because if you put in the mass of the block, which we don't have to worry about, and they've also put in the force of friction, but you're not asked to calculate the work done against the frictional force, you're asked to find the work done by the pushing force. And once you identify the pushing force is 6 newtons, it's quite simple after that to do work done, force times distance, 6 times 3, 18 joules, and the response for question 4 is D. Question 5. A trolley of mass 4 kilograms is travelling along a track. The trolley accelerates from 2 metres per second to 6 metres per second. The increase in the kinetic energy of the trolley is, and we're given the 5 responses. So, we've got to work out the kinetic energy, and the kinetic energy formula from the relationship sheet is half the mass times the speed squared. So, let's work out the kinetic energy when the car is travelling at 2 metres per second. And that's easy to do, EK is going to be one half times the mass, which is going to be four times the speed squared, which is two squared, which is going to be four. So we're going to have a value of the kinetic energy to be eight joules of kinetic energy when it's traveling at two meters per second. Likewise, when it's traveling at uh, six meters per second, we can do one half times the mass, mass stays the same, times, and it's going to be six squared, and six squared is going to give you 36. So we'll do the same thing again, and we get 72 joules. So the difference in the kinetic energy, the increase in kinetic energy, is you're going from 8 joules all the way up to 72 joules, so you have increased by 64 joules. So you have an increase of 64 joules. I'll just mark that there. 64 joules of kinetic energy, and the correct response for 5 is going to be B. 